Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vaga Maradian here at the Farnborough International Air Show, about 30 miles southwest of London, one of the world's leading gatherings of uh, defense leaders, military officers, industry executives, and aircraft from all around the world. On this year, the 100th anniversary of the Royal Air Force, the world's first independent air force. Our coverage here is sponsored by Leonardo, Leonardo DRS and Farnborough International, and we're honored to have with us the CEO and President of Raphael, um, retired Israel Army Major General Yoav Har Even. Sir, thanks very much. It's always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Uh, so uh, a lot of good news. So first, let's start with uh, the trophy. Uh, even though that's an armored vehicle system, uh, hard fought, uh, long fought competition. I remember talking uh, to you guys uh, almost 15 years ago about fitting uh, that kind of defensive capability on U.S. armored vehicles. The late uh, Vice Admiral Art Sabrowski uh, was um, investigating that technology to help U.S. troops when they were both in Iraq and Afghanistan from rocket-propelled grenade uh, attack that sadly cost a lot of troops uh, their lives. Your partners on it were Leonardo DRS, so full disclosure, Leonardo is our sponsor here. Um, talk to us a little bit about uh, the system, the opportunity, because you guys also have developed a medium weight vehicle yeah. system, a smaller vehicle, a uh, smaller system that you can mount on much thinner skinned vehicles, mm -hmm. not just heavy tanks. So talk to us a little bit about the importance of this, expanding the footprint in the United States, which has been a key strategic objective. You've got a very good guy who works over there uh, for you. Uh, talk to us a little bit about the doors that this opens for you. First of all, we're very proud that the, the U.S. Army has decided uh, to choose uh, the Trophy APS system for the Abrams tanks. Uh, we have been developed this system for more than 15 years, uh, part of the lesson learned already in the 73 war, but it took us a lot of time. Uh, we figure out that you have to work very hard in order to produce, or to develop and to produce, to do with all the safety elements, and to bring the uh, most effective system that will be able to deal with a variety uh, of threats. We also figure out that it's not enough to add passive and reactive armor on the vehicle because, you know, it's a problem of weight, so it's a, a new approach. Uh, and we are very proud that we were the pioneers. I think that we are the only uh, combat-proven system that we have uh, in the world. Uh, it was uh, operated uh, during the last operation in Gaza. And it's not only an active protective system. It's, as a matter of fact, it's a system that allows you not only to protect, but also to attack. Kind of imagine that on a brigade, you have more than 100 radars that are detecting all around, finding the threats. So it's not only an active protective system, it's a system. And of course, after a long trial uh, and test, with a lot of more than 100 shots that was been uh, done, and conducted by the U.S. Army, uh, uh, they choose us, and we are very proud, and we are going to deliver uh, as much as they need. Uh, we understand the urgent, and we are going to do it side by side uh, uh, on the production line, and uh, uh, also to supply to the Israeli Namer and Merkava. We also uh, figured out a few years ago that we have to work on the new version. As a matter of fact, it's the same version, but to squeeze the weight and keep all the good uh, stuff that we already have with the, uh, the uh, Trophy APS, and we are going to demonstrate it, uh, to try it uh, on a trial uh, at the end of this uh, uh, summer uh, to a variety of customers, including the U.S. Army, uh, on a Bradley. Uh, and this is our solution for the medium uh, uh, weight vehicle, uh, and you can implement it on a vehicle or on a turret, we also, as you know, have the 30 millimeter turrets. So on one turret, you will be able to have a turret with an APS, with a spike missile, as a system. And we understand that the, the key word is to develop a system, not to develop only a solution. And I think this is our advantage that we come from the operational uh, need. We develop the concept, and then we develop the solution. And of course, we are going to work as part of our strategy in the United States with an industrial company. And we understand at the end of the day, it should be a U.S. system. And this is why we choose and they choose us. And we are very proud to work with uh, Leonardo DRS. And uh, we hope to find some more opportunities as for the, what we call the medium 
uh, uh, trophy uh, that will be integrated in a variety of uh, combat uh, vehicles. Um, this is, uh, um, you guys have a stretch of products from Iron Dome, which is an air defense system. We talked about the active protection system. Um, you guys have amazing command and control and battle management systems, uh, as well as a lot of precision munitions. And so in a great power competition universe, um, you, you've got sort of a suite of products that would be very, 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 and also, by the way, 8,000 horsepower cyber capabilities as well. Um, talk a little bit about you know, what you're showcasing here at Farnborough uh, and, and how you see the market evolving um, as customers are stepping up their game. Every European country is increasing military spending. Um, you know, some of it is pre pressure from President Trump, but some of it is also driven by the threat, uh, looking particularly at what the Russians uh, have been doing and the kind of anti-access area denial capabilities that they can bring to bear. Uh, that puts a premium on being able to create your own pockets from which you can project force where Iron Dome becomes particularly uh, attractive. Talk to us a little bit about the suite of products and the kind and how you see the market evolving and how, which, which ones are the areas where you feel you're going to get the most traction. I think that, as you mentioned, there are a lot of opportunities. Part of it, well, with a, because of a variety of, of reasons. Uh, and if everyone is speaking about raising uh, the expenses, uh, we, of course, will be part of it. I think that what we bring to the table uh, is, first of all, the, fir the, the, uh, the best system, uh, as you just mentioned, and other system. Uh, Another thing that we bring to the table is that we don't deal with the platform. And I think our advantage is that we take our, the best platform, the best system that you have, most of them combat proven, at the edge of technology, and you can integrate it, and you can see it here in Farnborough. You can see that uh, you'll go to, uh, to a variety of uh, uh, aircraft uh, industry, and they uh, already uh, integrated and show here the SPICE 250. Uh, so there will be a lot of opportunities. We have to work very wise uh, in order to understand what are the operational needs. It's, it's not, again, it's not only selling the system. For example, one thing that we understand from what we learned from what happened in the, in the Middle East, but all over the world, is that when you are looking at the future, you must have uh, uh, other solution, basically not uh, uh, it, it cannot be based on GPS. I think that the environment uh, is going to be very tough. Uh, and I just read an interview with General Thomas, the head of SOCOM, that he said that this is something that you should prepare yourself. will not be able to work in a, a, or, or to uh, rely only on GPS. We have to go for a very uh, a good, precise uh, long-range standoff weapon system because you would not, will not like to be engaged by the variety of uh, air defense. And in order to make those uh, 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 weapon system relevant, you must have a very good communication system. So the opportunity is, is integrating our best SDR communication system, for example, with our uh, uh, sensors such as Lightning, Recolite, uh, IR uh, 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 detector in one system, and then to take all the information, to melt it, and to connect it to the right shooter that should be not a GPS uh, 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 interceptor or missile. Uh, so if you go around the world, you see that this is a lot of opportunities and think that we are mature enough uh, to bring solution that will be system of system solution or single solution. Uh, and of course, when you're looking on the air defense uh, 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 aspect, you understand that the issue is not only integrate, or on, not only intercepting against aircraft. Now, the big challenge, challenge is going to intercept against standoff ammunition. And this is why we think that there are a lot of opportunities. And of course, another uh, thing that we understand that we must work with local industry all around the world. We have been done it in the United States for more than 25 years. We mentioned DRS, but we are working very close with Raytheon. We are working very close with Lockheed that they just announced that they are going to integrate our SPICE missiles to their aircraft. 
We are working with uh, Norton Grumman, we are working with BAE, we are working all over the world. We understand that we should work in cooperate with local industry uh, uh, in order to uh, sell the best system that we developed. Um, and uh, also, I should say, happy birthday on your 70th anniversary year. There's a fascinating uh, photo display uh, that has uh, David Ben-Gurion. Uh, and also, you realize like how young Shimon Perez is, because I remember when uh, I interviewed him, he was you know, a stately old man, not you know, the young guy who's no, in no. all of these pictures, and a very young uh, Yitzhak Rabin, uh, among, among others. Um, we're at a time now of transatlantic tension. Uh, there's a trade war, uh, European nations are spending more money, uh, but there is frustration with Washington, uh, in part because how the president's message is being received. Um, you know, some Europeans have told me that, you know, we're under a lot of pressure from you to spend more money, buy weapons from you, give you economic concessions in exchange for security. And some are already and have said to me, if we can find other alternatives we would like to. In fact, one uh, official pointed out that there was a lot of choice in this world and you don't necessarily have to buy from the United States. Um, and, and some have pointed out that Israeli industry is a great opportunity, cutting edge technology, good price, uh, and, and that partnership spirit. Do you think that this current atmosphere is going to be uh, beneficial for Israeli companies like yours that, that have that technological edge and existing relationships? Do you think that as Europe spends more money, some of that money is going to end up with, with Israeli companies like Rafael? As, as you mentioned, we're in this business for more than 70 years. I hope that we will be able to uh, uh, sell our solution and that we will be the first choice, not because they don't want to buy U.S. system, uh, but because of our good products. And of course, there will be a lot of opportunities, uh, and we have to find those opportunities. Uh, and there will be a competition with US companies, with Israeli companies, with other companies. As long as it's a fair competition, I think it's good. And I think that our mission is to bring the best product on the best price that will be the best, uh, it will be um, the most effective solution. Uh, and I think that we are very proud that we did it in the history and we're going to do it in the future, no matter what other pressures they have all around the world. Um, do you feel, you know, everybody's talking about uh, buy American, uh, America first. Do you feel any pressure or any la lack of access uh, to the U.S. market? Obviously something very important, right? APS and a number of products have had traction in the U.S. Uh, you know, the lightning pod is synonymous with uh, precision strike in the United States. Um, do you see that there will be continued opportunities? Do you feel any pushback at all, or do you still feel that it's still a very open and welcoming market? No, I think the U.S. market is welcoming market, as long as we bring the best the, our product and as long as we find uh, the industrial partner in the United States. And it's not only in the United States; it's, as I mentioned, it's all over the world. And I think it's more than uh, legitimate. Uh, uh, requ uh, requirement from us uh, and we think that there will be a lot of opportunities in the US market we are working very close with the US uh, Ministry of Defense Army Air Force Navy we are trying to present our capabilities we are as part of our strategy we are doing it with the US company because we understand what are the limitations that we have uh, in the United States and we are more than happy to work with those industrial partners. And we, we think this partnership is a strategic partnership. It's not only a case, a one case a partnership with the trophy or the lightning. And you know, we are speaking about more than 25 years of history of working in the US market. And we are more than glad to work over there. And more than that, we are very proud that they choose us because of our products, not because of our special or get any special treatments because we are we came from Israel. Yoav Har Even, the uh, retired Israel Army Major General and the President and CEO of Rafael. Sir, thanks very much. Happy birthday and uh, and, and best of luck at the air show. Thank you.